Hey everyone, my name is DJ. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and I have a brand new commander from Phyrexia All Will Be One. This is Ovika Enigma Goliath, and you're gonna wanna check this deck out. Ovika Enigma Goliath is five blue red for a six six Phyrexian Nightmare. It's got flying, ward three, and pay three life. This is the important text. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create X 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin creature tokens where X is the mana value of that spell. They gain haste until end of turn. Oh, once I get Ovika on the battlefield, I can imagine just churning through my deck, playing free spells, delving away a bunch of cards to create an army of goblins with haste, swinging in, dealing damage in tons of different ways. Like this is gonna be fantastic. I'm wondering though how this is gonna stack up against other Is It Commanders. If we look at some of the most popular ones, yeah, a lot of them are Spellslinger decks and are gonna be pretty similar. We look at the top couple like Niv Mizzet, Spellslinger, uh, Varen Voice of Duality, more spell singing. Even the Locust God, the fourth most popular, is a creature that creates hasty one ones. So we're not seeing something super duper unique. Uh, I do think it's powerful to create that many one ones, which means that you're gonna be able to leverage that goblin creation way more than everyone else. Um, I am a little bit worried about the mana constraints. Like it costs seven mana to get onto the battlefield. That's that's kind of rough, especially when you have other is it commanders like, like Mizix of the Is Magnus, for example, that comes down on four and then reduces the casting cost of your other spells. It's kind of like a, it's a catalyst for the rest of your deck rather than being a payoff. So we're gonna explore that. What does it mean to have Ovika in your command zone and what stupid powerful stuff can you do when you have a bajillion goblins on the battlefield? Let's take a look at this deck. You know, this deck could be really simple to build. You just go through your binder, get the best blue and red spells that you have, slap them into a deck, and you're gonna be good to go. But I wanna explore some different components so that you can figure out how best to build this deck. I wanna talk about some of the critical infrastructure, the things that don't necessarily trigger your commander but can still be excellent. I'm gonna to wanna to make as many tokens as possible. So third path iconoclast, creating one one colorless soldier tokens are gonna to be good. Maniform hellkite, creating hasty dragons. And these dragons are as big as the casting cost of our spells. So again, if we're able to play like a dig through time or something really big, then we're gonna get a big hasty dragon. Haste is really strong too. Of course, there's the classic Talran Sky Summoner that's gonna be able to create an army of blue drakes. These are all solid, but I think Mana Form Hellkite is best, and I'd actually supplement this category with Shark Typhoon. Shark Typhoon is a non-creature spell, so it will trigger your commander, and creating a ton of sharks, again, as big as the spells you're casting, means that you're getting full value. We are gonna have to pay attention to our curve, because if all of our big payoffs are seven plus mana, uh, it's gonna be tough to get this deck really moving. Of course, spells don't always have to trigger creatures. They can trigger card draw with Archmage Emeritus, or it can trigger mana production with Storm Kiln Artist or Bergy God of Storytelling. Mizix of the Is Magnus can also create a ton of mana. It's also a goblin, so great flavor and synergy there. Speaking of goblins, we have Gutter Snipe. You don't need to create tokens when direct damage to each opponent can happen with every single spell. And then let's talk about the damage that can cre be created by Balmor Battle Mage Captain. Blue and a red for a 1-3 flyer. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus one plus oh and gain trample until end of turn. Uh, this is something that can just power up your entire goblin army. Because remember, they have haste, you're gonna be chaining spells together, and all of the goblins are just gonna get pumped and pumped and pumped, and that trample is gonna be key. Oh, so good. And then of course, if you just think about all the cards in this category, and then imagine Veyran Voice of Duality doubling up all their triggers. Oh, it's so good. So Ovika creates goblins, and we can lean into some of those goblin strategies. Not only does it make this deck a little bit more unique versus other Spellslinger decks, it can also make it incredibly powerful. I already mentioned Ovika, I mentioned Gutter Snipe, Mizzix of the Is Magnus, but Goblin Electromancer does a great job of making your instants and sorceries cheaper. We can also make things a little bit more mana efficient by using a card like Skirk Prospector, changing in the goblins we create for more mana so we can cast more spells. 
cards that can supplement Skirk Prospector is Phyrexian Altar and Ashnod's Altar. Again, changing in creature tokens for more mana so we can keep going. We can also use a card like Brightstone Ritual, an instant add red to your mana pool for each goblin in play that can produce a huge amount of mana because we're gonna have a lot of goblins. Speaking about a lot of goblins, Cranko Mob Boss. This can double up your goblins and improve all of your goblin and token synergies. And once you have all those goblins, let's do extra damage with cards like Hobgoblin Bandit Lord. We're gonna be putting a ton of goblins on the battlefield every single turn and not only pumping them, but also red in a tap. It deals damage equal to the number of goblins that entered the battlefield under your control this turn to any target. And so for a single red mana, you can kind of just dome someone as you're storming off with your commander. It's gonna be great. Uh, Pashalik Mons is gonna be fantastic because it's board wipe protection once you've built up this army of goblins. And then Arda's Cobbler of War is just two mana for a one, one haste, but it gives all your hasty goblins that enter the battlefield a plus two plus O oh bonus. So it anthems them from the very beginning. Not only do we have goblin synergies, but we have great token synergies too. We have things like direct damage from Perforos, God of the Forge, Impact Tremors. We have sacrifice outlets like Goblin Bombardment that can just turn and weaponize all of your goblins into direct damage. We have pump effects for your army like Shared Animosity or Surge to Victory. Devilish Valet can also be a fun win condition on its own. You just put it on the battlefield, storm off afterwards, and yep, that's gonna take out a player at the table. And you know, sometimes goblins can be a little bit weak, so Brutaclad Telcor Engineer can upgrade them into bigger tokens, and Mystic Reflection can turn them into bigger relevant creatures. I mean, just imagine Mystic Reflectioning a bunch of goblins into Devilish Valets. Like, that, that's a play I wanna see. You know, I don't think we've done enough talking about direct non-creature spells. They're gonna produce the most goblins. And in part because you kind of don't need to. Again, you can go into your binder and pick out whatever great spells that you want. But I do want to mention a couple and specifically some important things you want to make sure that you have in your deck. I think that you are going to need cheap interaction because people are gonna see your commander hit the battlefield and they're gonna know that it's dangerous. So one mana counter spells or cheap counter spells, an offer you can't refuse is gonna be great. Fierce guardianship, a free counter spell protecting your commander is gonna be fantastic. Deflecting SWAT. And then again, free counter spells too, because it allows you to storm off and protect him. So force of will is gonna be strong too. And then again, all of these things you can cast for free, but they actually have a high mana cost, meaning that you're dumping more goblins onto the battlefield. I think that it's gonna be important for you to have some card filtering so that you can get to what you need. Uh, and that's critical in a combo deck. You're gonna to wanna to hit those land drops because this is a mana hungry deck and you're gonna to wanna to have relevant spells to cast after your commander. So little things like ponder, preordain, expressive iteration, all of them help you set up your hand so you can have a big effective turn with your commander. Speaking of big turns, the more mana you have, the bigger your turn for can be. Mana Geyser, whew, that can produce a ton of mana and let you go off. A Battle Hymn is something that can help you keep going off as you put a bunch of goblins on the battlefield, produce even more red mana. Jessica's Will, producing card draw and red mana, it's a staple in those storm decks. And then of course, big mana spells. I think that Dig Through Time and other Delve spells are gonna be particularly good because Dig Through Time, you're gonna pay blue blue for it, delving six cards out of your graveyard away. And then yes, you're gonna dig deep and you're gonna get more spells to cast, but more importantly, uh, eight goblins onto the battlefield, yes. And that's gonna be supplemented with other Delve spells like you know Treasure Cruise, stuff like that. And then it wouldn't be Commander without other big splashy spells. Uh, Seagate Restoration is gonna be fantastic because again, it allows you to hit those land drops, which are very important in this deck, mana hungry deck that it is. But then when you draw it in the late game, when you have the mana for it, it's a big powerful spell. But then pick what you like. I like Amanatu's Augury because I think that I'm gonna have a selection of all types of different cards that I'm gonna be able to dump onto the battlefield. And then of course, Mizix's Mastery because I can pay four and get something back or I can pay eight and do something broken. Remember, Ovika is gonna be super mana hungry and this triggers off of all non-creature spells. So if you have a complement of mana rocks, they can ramp you in the early game and produce goblins in the late game. So they're gonna be particularly good. 
Of course, I'll play all the important mana rocks, the two mana rocks that'll help me ramp and fix my mana. But I think I'm gonna focus on too, Heraldric Banner. I mean, it's gonna come down and pump all of my goblins. It's gonna be great. I kind of want Pyromancer's Goggles. I know five mana is a lot, but doubling up some of these big spells are gonna be so much fun. Strixhaven Stadium. I can imagine taking someone out with just like 10 goblins rather than the full 40 that I would need and then being super frustrated by Strixhaven Stadium. It's gonna be great. Uh, Cursed Mirror is gonna be solid because just think about it. Like, okay, I'll tap my Krenko, make a bunch of new goblins, play Cursed Mirror, keep that one around, tap it, make a bunch of goblins. Like when I think about the crazy creatures and how synergistic and important they are, I, I, I think I want Cursed Mirror just for those big plays. And that's actually what this deck is all about. It's about the big plays. And that's something super commandery. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I can't wait to try this deck out in paper. I've already started building it. If you want to pick up some of these cards or any cards, you should head on over to Cool Stuff Inc. They're the sponsor of the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. And when you do, you should use the coupon code JUMBO5 because that's going to save you 5% off your order. I want to thank my patrons and I want to thank you for watching this video, for commenting, for liking, for subscribing, all of those great things for the metrics. Couldn't do without you. Thank you so much and have a great one. Bye-bye, everyone.